Oh! Oh my gosh! Every single day across the globe, anglers are purchasing brand new fishing lures with the hope of going out there and catching fish. And we as anglers place our trust in our hope that these lures are going to catch us fish and they're not going to let us down. We put our trust in the line tie, we put our trust in the split rings, in the hooks, in the construction of the lure as a whole. But is that trust misplaced? Should we truly have faith in our lures to not let us down? In this video, we're gonna cover the topic of terminal tackle and attempt to answer the age old question, does the fishing hook I use on my lure really make a difference? My name's Tyler and let's talk about it. How's it going everybody and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. My goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers and catch more fish no matter where you live in the country and no matter what species of bass you are fishing for. Whether you're a bank beater, a bass boat angler, or anything in between, my videos are for you guys. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button to join Team TRF. If y'all have been tuning into the last few videos, you've probably seen that we are doing a bass fishing giveaway trip with me and the chance of winning an $80,000 bass boat. So if that piques your interest, uh, an all expenses paid trip with Tyler and maybe an $80,000 bass boat. How the heck do I win this? It is a charity raffle to raise money for muscular dystrophy. I have partnered with a uh, nonprofit organization called Bass for Beckers that raises money to send kids with muscular dystrophy to camp and to raise money for MD research. Now, our goal for the month of September, if you're watching this later, I know they, they run the contest all year round to give away the boat, but in this month, the prize, along with the bass boat, is a bass fishing trip with me, all expenses paid, and we're trying to raise $50,000. So I'll have the link down in the description below as well as pinned to the top of the comment section or it's www.bassforbeckers.com. Please, if you guys can give anything, one raffle tickets, 10 raffle tickets, whatever you wanna give, uh, we're, like I said, we're trying to raise $50,000. Raising money for MD is a cause that I'm really passionate about and I hope you guys are as well. And who doesn't wanna win a free $80,000 bass boat, all expense paid, fishing vacation with yours truly, at least maybe some of you guys do. Again, I will leave that link down in the video description below if you guys want to give. But without further ado, let's hop into talking about terminal tackle. Every single fishing lure that we purchase has some form of terminal tackle on it. My definition of terminal tackle is anything that is kind of the, the basic necessities on a lure. So you need a weight to it of some kind. You need a hook. Sometimes you need, uh, I, would, I would even call glitter or paint terminal tackle. These are just things that you need on your lure to catch fish. Without terminal tackle, you're not gonna catch any fish. And when you buy a lure like this one right here, it comes with a certain quality of terminal tackle. So a certain quality of hook, certain quality of split ring, and of course, the cheaper your lures are, more than likely, the less quality you're going to find in that terminal tackle. And so that's the, how the question we're gonna cover today, and we're gonna attempt to answer, is does the terminal tackle really matter? For the majority of anglers, is it worth spending money to upgrade your hooks, to go instead of lead weight, use tungsten weight, instead of monofilament, use fluorocarbon, is it really worth it to upgrade your terminal tackle, uh, and will it really help you catch more fish in your bass fishing expeditions? That's the question we're gonna answer. But to begin this answering of the question, I'm gonna tell a story and I'm gonna call it the tale of two anglers. So stick with me, this story has a purpose and it will set up exactly what we're going to talk about throughout the rest of this video. So the tale of two anglers goes as such. It is the summer of 2016. An angler is excited to go out there and fish a body of water and they have heard this body of water has big bass living in it. The lake record is 17 pounds, and this angler is on a quest to break their PB, which at the time is 8.9 pounds. So as this angler is rigging up his rods and reels to get ready for tomorrow's expedition, he thinks to himself, you know what, if the lake record in this, in this big pond is 17 pounds and my PB is only 8.9, I'm gonna upgrade my terminal tackle a little bit. So they take their standard topwater walking bait that comes with standard hooks, standard split ring, and they increase the quality of those. They increase the strength of the split ring and they increase both the size, the strength, and the sharpness of the treble hooks. Just in case one of those big old lunker bass that's lurking out there in the depths wants to come up and eat that top water. This angler does not want to blow the opportunity if it presents itself. So he does that, upgrades the terminal tackle on this top water walking bait and goes to sleep ready to catch a new PB. Well, what ends up happening is that angler gets up fishes all morning long, catches a few nice fish, but doesn't really have a stellar day, and decides to take one more cast, and turns the camera off on his chest. 
on that cast over a long point, as a matter of fact, one of the biggest points in the lake, a giant bass explodes on that topwater walking bait. The fight ensues, that angler gets the bass onto the bank, and that is a brand new PB at 9.85 pounds. The fish was giant, the fight was incredibly hard, but yet the end result was a success and a brand new giant PB for this angler. Now flash forward with me to the summer of 2021. Another angler in Florida has heard of a lake that has the potential to catch giant bass. He's heard of his friends catching eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 pound bass out of this lake and has seen such by others on social media. So this angler decides to take a quick trip out there for the afternoon and evening to try to catch a brand new PB bass. But in the hustle and bustle of life and in the desire to save as much sunlight and of course fishing time as possible, this angler heads out to the lake and doesn't quite prepare as well as angler one did. So angler two digs through his tackle box and pulls out a brand new topwater walking bait basically just out of the package, replaces the topwater frog that he's been fishing with all day with his topwater walking bait and starts fishing. Only a few casts in, an absolute explosion happens on Angler 2's topwater walking bait and the fight ensues. This giant bass is fighting hard, trying everything it can to get stuck in that grass and get the lure out of its mouth, and Angler 2 is fighting just as hard to get that fish into the boat. And then, tragedy strikes. This giant bass jumps and is every bit of 10 pounds. But as the bass is landing back in the water, the lure breaks free. Angler 2 is absolutely crushed and falls on the boat deck, making all sorts of loud, uncontrollable noises of disappointment and despair. How could this happen? Angler 2 yells. Everything seemed perfect. And so he reels his top water in, only to find that his lure let him down. Not only was one of the treble hooks completely bent out, another treble hook and split ring were completely missing off his topwater bait. And in that moment, angler number two realized there was something he could have done to land that fish. And that was upgrade his treble hooks and take the time to make sure everything was ready for a big fish, which inevitably came. Now, some of y'all may remember that angler number one is in fact me. That is my story on how I caught my current PB bass on a topwater walking bait. Now, the catch to the story is that I lied to y'all. Angler number two is also me. And the story of my terminal tackle failing me and a PB lost is also true. In that moment, I decided sometime this year, I'm going to film a video explaining when, where, why, and how I decide to change my terminal tackle. And I hope this is going to be an encouragement video for you guys to do the same. Now, our first topic to discuss is the fact that every single fishing lure, like I mentioned, comes with terminal tackle, but not all of the terminal tackle on these lures is of the highest quality. And just from a business perspective, that makes sense. Fishing lure companies are businesses, they are companies. And because of that, profitability is something they have to think about when producing and selling fishing lures. Now you wanna walk that line as a fishing lure producer between making good quality product, but also not making it cost too much on your end as the manufacturer, because then you're going to have to charge more for the lure on retail to the consumer. So that's the balance. You want a good quality lure that doesn't cost too much to you and thus does not cost too much to the consumer. In fishing lures, the first thing of quality that I have found goes is terminal tackle, specifically hooks and split rings. There are some lures out there. I think the ones that kind of pop in my mind first off are uh, like the Jitterbug and some of the old head in uh, spooks and really any old topwater lures or lipless crankbaits that come with those like brass hooks that you literally take them with your finger and you can kind of bend them. That is the least quality terminal tackle. And then somewhere in the middle on this quality is, is most fishing lure producers. We're going to talk about a few of the ones that, that do have upgraded uh, terminal tackle from the start. We'll get there in a second, but at least the company that I'm sponsored by, Strike King, is kind of somewhere in the middle. And then you have a few that are in the, the higher, I wouldn't necessarily call them quality of lures, but they do have a higher quality product when it comes to terminal tackle, uh, a stronger hook, stronger split rings that do not require any kind of upgrade to them, you can fish them just like they are, just out of the box. But that doesn't mean you can't fish other companies' lures that don't have the highest quality terminal tackle. As the decades progress, fishing lure companies get better and better at minimizing cost, but also keeping quality high. And so I'm confident in 90% of situations, maybe not even 90, 95, 98% of bass fishing situations at using the hooks that come standard on just about every single lure company out there, including the one that I work with, Strike King. The hooks that come with Strike King are strong black nickel hooks. They've gotten better, a lot better over the last few years compared to what they were five, 10 years ago on most Strike King lures, I'm proud to say that. But they are not the highest quality hooks on the market. Now the question we were trying to answer is do you need the best hook out there to catch fish? And in the vast majority of cases, you don't. 
If you are fishing for just normal size fish, I'm saying anything less than six to eight pounds, you don't need to upgrade your terminal tackle. Now, some guys want to for tournament situations because you never know a fish could do X, Y, Z and fight extra hard and, and you could set the hook too hard and so you want kind of a cushion to be able to uh, set the hook harder or use thicker or heavier line and not bend out your hook or your split rings. I understand that. But for the vast majority of anglers and especially a lot of you guys that watch my channel, the hooks that come standard on these lures are good enough. I have caught many big bass, up to eight pounds, on the standard terminal tackle that comes on the lures that I use in my bass boat and on the bank. But there are those situations, and I believe that every angler has some type of situation like this in their life. Whether you live in Florida or Texas and you have big bass all over the place, really heck, anywhere in the country for that matter, everybody has access somewhere to a pond, lake, stream, body of water that has the potential to give you a brand new PB. Of course, that's what we're all searching for anyways. And so my plea to you guys in this video is that if you are searching for your new PB and you want the best possibility of hooking that fish, fighting that fish and getting it back to you in your hand for a picture, is going to be upgrading your terminal tackle. And so I'm gonna talk about some of my favorite terminal tackle upgrades, which are completely sponsor free. None of these hooks I got for free or even got a discount on. I went to Bass Pro Shops and I bought these hooks for myself. The first piece of terminal tackle that I love upgrading is my line. Now, luckily I work with an amazing line company, Seaguar, and I guess I take that back when I said it wasn't gonna be anything sponsored. I do work with Seaguar, but I bought their line for like eight years of my life before I worked with them for the past two. So I have confidence telling you guys Seaguar line is some of the best out there. And so do you need the highest quality Tatsu fluorocarbon and Vizex for everything? You really don't. You can get by with red label, you can get by with a lot of different types of fishing lines, but if you are in the chase, in the pursuit of catching a big bass or maybe a tournament situation, and you want nothing to go wrong, you want the best chance of catching and landing those fish, that's gonna be upgrading your quality of line. The second piece of terminal tackle worth upgrading, especially when it comes to hard baits, I'm talking jerk baits, crank baits, and topwater baits, that is going to be your split rings. Most of the split rings that come on companies' lures are not really good. If you take the lure in one pair of pliers and the treble hook in the other and pull them apart, you can actually flex and oftentimes completely bend out that split ring. So what split ring do I like to use when I'm switching out my terminal tackle when targeting big bass or in a very important fishing scenario? That's going to be the VMC stainless steel split ring, really any, st any stainless steel split ring. There are thicker, more high quality black nickel split rings, but I just have a lot of confidence in stainless steel. Yes, they are a little bit heavier, so if you throw them on a jerk bait, you may have to downsize the size of your split ring or just go with a more high quality split ring than comes on most jerk baits. Uh, but when it comes to crank baits and top waters, I don't really care about weight all that often because if it's crank bait, I want it to get down there to the bottom and grind on the bottom. And top waters are usually buoyant enough to deal with a tiny weight difference differential of, of, of stainless steel split rings as opposed to black nickel. We all know stainless steel is incredibly strong and that's why I have confidence in stainless steel split rings. The second piece of terminal tackle to think about buying a higher quality of to upgrade is going to be your worm hook. I'm talking your straight shank worm hook, your flipping worm hook, your EWG, you know, wide gap worm hook. And the reason for that is because when I was starting bass fishing, I would go to Bass Pro or Tackle Warehouse and I would buy like the Bass Pro brand hooks and they come in like a pack of 36, and they do the job. I caught plenty of fish on them, but I noticed as my hook set got stronger and as I caught bigger fish and started using heavier pound tests of line, that hook, which you can, you can go to Bass Pro and, and test it out right now for yourself, you can actually flex that hook. And so whether it's buying a, uh, a super line EWG like Gamagatsu makes a thicker uh, gauge wire hook or just a higher quality hook with a sharper point, a more uh, well built, you know, durability wise um, barb to it, uh, a stronger eye that maybe is, is fully molded so you're, you're not, your line can't come slipping out of that uh, line tie. I think upgrading your wide gap hook, upgrading your worm hook is definitely worth it. And I will have all of my favorite terminal tackle upgrades for you guys down in the video description below as always, my tackle is linked down there. Please shop for your tackle using those links. It helps me out a ton make affiliate income. Now moving on to our last piece of terminal tackle and quite possibly the most important one for making sure that you land those big bass is going to be upgrading your, oh, upgrading your treble hooks. There's two main styles of treble hook. There is a wide gap treble hook and a straight shank treble hook. What that means, I'll have two B-roll shots here. A wide gap treble hook kind of goes uh, down from the shank, comes back around, and the points 
angle back in like this. Those are meant for fish that are eating your lures so well, they're getting the whole thing in their mouths that when those treble hooks hook them, it hooks them very well and they will not get off. So when I talk about square bill crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, heck, even jerkbaits or other crankbaits and topwaters, when those fish, let's say the early spring, are really chasing it down, choking your lures, that's the type of treble hook you want to use. But that is not the majority of the case for me. Most of my treble hooked hard baits have a straight shank treble hook on them, and that is where the, lure, the hook comes down from the middle, it makes the bend at the bottom, and it goes straight back up. There's no bending in this way, back toward the lure or back toward the eye of the hook. It goes straight up. And that is the best for scenarios when fish, maybe you're not eating the bait that well. They're kind of slapping at it, maybe they're, they're, they're mouthing at the bait a little bit, and you want the best chance of, honestly, snagging the fish either in the mouth or on the side of the head. That is when I use the original straight shank treble hooks. Now, a few lure companies do come standard with higher quality hooks than just your regular old black nickel hooks. I know that Berkeley's hard baits come with their brand new treble hooks and in terminal tackle, I believe it's called the Fusion Hook. And I know that Bill Lewis has a few, I think they're MR6, like Mark Daniels Jr. crankbaits, and the lipless crankbaits, all the rattle traps, all come with triple grip hooks. The problem is with that, like I said, I don't use the round, the uh, the wide gap triple grip hooks for the majority of the time I'm fishing throughout the year, and so I would be changing those out as soon as I got them to round bend treble hooks or straight shank treble hooks. And because they come standard with higher quality terminal tackle, they're more expensive lures. If you look at the average Strike King or any other uh, you know, name brand out there that doesn't come with the uh, upgraded terminal tackle, you look at the price of those compared to the price of the ones that have upgraded terminals, you're gonna find usually a one to three dollar, sometimes more difference in the price of those two lures, which in my mind doesn't really make any sense because I'm just trying to do the math in my head. I think it makes more sense to do it this way. In any case, here are my two favorite models of treble hooks in both the straight shank and the uh, the wide gap. When it comes to the wide gap, for those fish that are chomping on your lures, I don't think there's a better treble hook in both quality of construction, sharpness, durability, and the how long it is from the eye of the treble hook down to where the hooks start to point up. I think the ratio is perfect on this hook, and that is the Mustad KVD Elite uh, triple grip treble hook, specifically in size four for most of your lures out there. Most of your square bills, your jerk baits, your top waters are going to be a size four. I will have a list down below of the proper hook sizes that match with certain lures because I know that when you buy a lure from the store, it doesn't usually tell you what size hook comes on that lure. So if you're confused, well, I have this top water lure, what size treble hook do I need to upgrade it? I will have the list of those in kind of general terms listed in the video description. And when it comes to the straight shank or round bend trebles, I love the owner ST series of treble hooks, whether it's the ST36 size two or the ST36 size six. The size six are ones that are used on jerk baits, smaller jerk baits, smaller crank baits, and kind of poppers. And then the size two, you could go size four as well. Um, I just only have these two right here. Size two is for your deep crank baits. I'm hardly ever using triple grips, though, those wide gap treble hooks, hardly ever using those on my deep crank baits. Usually this is for my bigger top waters and my deep crank baits. I have so much confidence in the sharpness, durability, and like I said, ratio, just like the mustads of these owners right here. So in my opinion, these are the only two hooks you need. I haven't used Hayabusa, I haven't used, I have used some of Berkeley. They're okay, I don't think they're any better than these right here, especially for the price. And I just really think these are the two best ones out there. Anybody in the comments is welcome to disagree with me. And of course I, like I said, I don't have a hook sponsor, so I'm willing to go out there and try any type of treble hook. I know there's some really cool ones out there with unique designs or, you know, the barb facing outward, that kind of thing. But these are the two that I think are best for any upgrading of your terminal tackle situation. So that is gonna do it for the instructional portion of this video. Let's hop back on the water and show you guys a few fish catches from a day in Minnesota with an absolutely insane uh, sexy dog bite top water walking bait with some giant fish, at least from Minnesota standards, three to four and a half pound largemouth bass that annihilated my lures and thus made it a necessity because of how hard they fought in, in my hook set with the braided line, made it a necessity to have that terminal tackle upgraded. And of course, I land every single one of these fish. So enjoy this awesome top water fishing content. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys out on the water. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't even watching. <laughs> I just heard it. Awesome. Oh, 
Holy cow. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, Connor, you were right, buddy. That was one of the most vicious attacks I've ever had in my life. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, I got him on the top of the head. I got him on a cranium. Don't you come off, buddy. Oh. <laughs> one came out. Do not flip, buddy. Do not flip. Do not flip. Gotcha. Aha. Big in, folks, on the sexy dog with a beefed up tackle. I didn't even have to set the hook. All I, all I had to do was go, oh, there he is. And uh, with this beefed up system, we got him. Beautiful fish. Man, that's fun. That's fun. Dude, there's a bunch of fish there. There's a bunch. Oh, gosh. No need to set the hook there, y'all. No need to set the hook there. He set it for me. Just open up the bale. Open up the bale. Let him fight. Wow. Oh, criminy. Hello. How are you doing today? There's a really good way, y'all, with these travel hooks to turn a fun day into a horrible day. So always take it slow when you're fishing with the big trebs. There you go. Rebounder. They are fine. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh no! No! Come on! Come on! Eat it! He oh, it. he got it! Yes! Oh, man! I don't think, I think there's more than one fish there. Wow, you think so? Make it cast back there's there. No way. Oh, no gosh. Way. That was so cool, y'all. Oh, he went after it like six times. If this even is the same fish. Oh, my gosh. Sheesh. Come on. Come on. Bring it in here. Yes, sir! Oh! Hey, 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 chill, chill, chill. <laughs> Is that your buddy? Yeah. Yep, there we go. There we go, they're around here. I almost power pull down every time instead of spot lock. Gosh. Hello, buddy. Hello, buddy. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, bring it up in this boat. Bring it up in this boat. Yes, sir. Hello. Let go off. I'm surprised. Oh, there's one. Come on. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Oh my goodness. Holy smokes, dude. Oh my gosh. Wow, wow, wow. wow. How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to TRM. That thing came out of the water like a shark about four times. Ooh. Not like it's that big. <laughs> My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. That fish looked way bigger. Way bigger. Sheesh. Oh, that's a clump right there. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Ho, oh, ho, ho, We got Connor in the back, Scott, one too y'all can get out there and catch yourselves a new PB. Look at this. That right there, folks, is a chunky dunk on the big topwater, one of the lures we're gonna talk about in today's episode. What does it take to catch the big bass like this? My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Better. Oh, I'm sorry, I got your fish. I'm sorry, Connor missed one back there and I threw back in there and got him. Oh, this is crazy, y'all. I apologize for the wind, my GoPro keeps overheating, so windy audio it is. Bring it up in here, you are not very big. Smallest one in a while. Oh, and this is a great example of why you do not grab a fish like this in the mouth because they are shakers, movers and shakers. So you grab them like this, use pliers. Thank you, buddy. Going against the grain, folks. Throwing the big ones. 